an electron accelerating through a relatively modest voltage accelerates up to a rather significant speed. Let's consider what that number would be. Let's imagine a situation where an electron is sitting over by a plate of metal which is at zero volts. It's going to be a drawn toward another plate which is at positive one volt because the electron is negative and the other uh, plate is at a positive voltage. It should feel an attractive force. To calculate its final speed, we can use the fact that work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. If the electron started out at zero speed, or zero kinetic energy, its final kinetic energy will be given by the amount of work done on the electron. The work done is just force times distance. In this case, the force is the electric force, or the electrostatic force, acting on the electron, and that is Q times the electric field. The electric field, in this case, comes from the difference in voltage between the two plates. And if there's a distance d between the two plates, then the elect uh, that work is done, uh, that force acts across the distance d to get total work. You may remember that the electric field times distance is also equal to voltage. In this case, we can just say that Q times E times d is E, the electron charge, times the voltage difference. Well, that has to equal the change in kinetic energy. And since the kinetic energy initially was zero, the final kinetic energy will be 1 half times the electron mass times the final velocity squared. And that should equal the work done, E times V naught. The final velocity then would be the square root of 2 times the electron charge times the voltage divided by the electron mass. If we put in some numbers here, the voltage was 1 volt. The electron charge is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And we can look up the electron mass to be 9 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. This velocity is 10 to the 6 meters per second after plugging these numbers into our calculator. That's a significant speed. And in fact, it's nearly 1% of the speed of light. And this naive little calculation shows that the kinds of units we'll be dealing with in, uh, in working with small particles are going to send them up to incredible speeds very quickly. So we need some new units. A joule, if we did a joule of work on an electron, would do something outrageous. A joule is one coulomb times one volt. Supplying this much energy to an electron would provide an unrealistically large velocity to the electron. So instead, we decide divide have devised another uh, unit for energy called the electron volt, or E times V. One electron volt is equal to one electron charge times one volt of potential. So that works out to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. That's a more realistic amount of work to do on an object this small, and we can start to quantify uh, units of work or energy in this new unit the electron volt. Working with joules when discussing subatomic or even atomic level systems is like using meters to measure their length. All of a sudden, everything will come out with crazy exponents, like 10 to the minus 31, that are very difficult to grasp. It's not unusual to have to do this kind of thing to invent new units when dealing with different systems. Just think about how astronomers handle length. They do not use meters or else everything would come out to be very large in terms of scientific notation exponents. Instead, they start inventing new units like the light year or the parsec. This new set of units using the electron volt works for mass as well. If we think about the fact that energy uh, units are also constructed when we take a mass unit times a velocity unit squared, then a, no a good unit for mass is the electron volt divided by c squared or MeV over c squared which is 10 to the 6 times EV over C squared. In these units, the electron mass, which is approximately 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, works out to be 511 keV over C squared, or 0.5 MeV over C squared. And the proton mass, which is 2 times 10 to the minus 29 kilograms, works out to be approximately 938 MeV over C squared, approximately 2,000 times the electron mass. 
Now, very few physicists in the, in the universe can tell you the mass of the electron stated in kilograms or in MKS units, but nearly all of them can tell you that it's about one half of an MeV. That's because the new MeV units, and, or KeV units, or EV units, are just that useful. Oh wait, I made a mistake. I already forgot the C squared. I quoted the electron mass as in being something in MeV. Many times you'll hear sloppy physicists, which is to say every single one of us, quote a mass in MeV. What they really mean is that the, the equivalent energy stored in that mass, or mc squared. Properly speaking, they should probably all be saying MeV over c squared or EV over c squared, but they always think about the equivalent energy, mc squared. Electrostatics work out rather conveniently in the new units as well. In Coulomb's law, we often have to make calculations that look something like we want a force, which is the constant k times one charge times another charge divided by the distance squared, or else we want a potential energy, which is k times q times the other q divided by r. And we have to remember that this constant k, at least in MKS units, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. I, to be honest, I have trouble remembering what k is. Now, since there's a slightly convenient thing here, most of the elementary particles are rather easy to remember in terms of their charge because they're all multiples of the electron charge, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. The proton, of course, has a charge, uh, which we can quantify as z times an electron charge, or where z is like an integer plus 1. The electron has a charge, which is another factor z for the electron, times e, which where this other z is minus 1. Quarks are a little different, of course. It's useful to know this combination of constants, k times e squared. And in this case, you can work out the, the force between a proton and an electron is ke squared times the product of these two z's divided by r squared. In many cases, the order of magnitude for the separation between uh, ob charged objects is something like nanometers, like in an atom, in which case we'd like this Ke squared combination of constants to be somewhat convenient to use when we're talking about real charges, like electrons and protons, separated at scales of like an atom. You can verify for yourself then, when you take your MKS units and convert them, that the combination of constants Ke squared is equal to 1.44 eV nanometers.